All right, Minnesota 34, Nebraska 7, Sunday morning quarterback. I'll tell you what, Sean, this one was a shocker to me. It was surprising that they got pushed around. Nebraska did up front. Minnesota won that line of scrimmage battle all night long. I just didn't see it coming like this, Andy. You look at Minnesota, this is a team that struggled really all but their last week's win against Illinois. And for Nebraska to get pushed around, on the line of scrimmage by a team that didn't run for 100 yards against Purdue. They didn't run for 100 on Georgia Southern. Uh, they did go for over 300 the week before, so maybe that Illinois game was kind of a turning point for Minnesota, but still an unacceptable performance. I feel dumb. I picked Nebraska to win this game. I thought I really liked, I thought on paper, that the way they played defensively against Northwestern, it would carry over. Boy, was I wrong on that pick. Yeah, the Gophers ran it for 322 on the evening and just really had their way from start to finish. Offensively, the Huskers moved the ball in that first half. They just couldn't push it over the goal line. Uh, Noah Vedrill, you know, don't pin this loss on him. He was the least of their problems on this Saturday night. No, I thought Noah Vedrill stayed within the offense. He made the right reads, decisions. The problem was Nebraska. They just kept getting in their own way. They'd make a big play, then they'd get a five-yard penalty. There were three kind of crucial penalties in the first half. The block in the back by Ken Noah that took away what probably would have been a touchdown. Uh, Bo Wilson gets a false start on a play. Um, you know, Nebraska gets a 17-yard run by by Vedral. Then the, the before the next first down play, false start, you're first and 15. And then you saw another false start by Jerron Woodyard. So th there were just little things and Nebraska, Andy, is not good enough to overcome a first and 15 right now. Yeah, those are killers. And remember that long pass to J.D. Spielman in that first quarter, and then they followed it up with sack, sack, so they went the wrong direction. All right, uh, where does this team go from here? Uh, you know, obviously, we get a bye week, uh, but a 2-2 two and two in, the, in the conference, Big Ten West is kind of out of reach right now with Wisconsin dominating the way they are. Yeah, you look at what we all thought this season might and could be, and everyone's way off from the Big Ten media to the local media mm -hmm. to the everybody. And I think it's it's hard right now for everybody around here to when you look at where Nebraska's at because, you know, this is a 4-3 and three team that easily could even be worse than 4-3 and three right now. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you, you look ahead and Wisconsin, another shutout on Saturday against Michigan State. Mm -hmm. um, Iowa, as we know, played Penn State tough. They've played everybody tough. Mm -hmm. this, this road is going to get more difficult over the final five, and I think Scott Frost said it best. We just need a break. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs a break from everybody. He told the players, don't even come in the building on Sunday and Monday. Just take a break, and, and let's get back mentally and, and get back to work after a few days off. Yeah, and Scott Frost doesn't talk about injuries, but they're piling up. Wondell Robinson leaving, and he was walking around with a boot in that second half. Yeah, Wondell Robinson leaving, and then you know, he, he's given them so much. Maurice Washington really hasn't given them anything for weeks. So you take away some of your big guys. We know J.D. Spielman was playing hobbled in this game as well. Maurice Wa or uh, Noah Vedrill gets dinged up. We know Adrian Martinez is out right now. So a lot of the key guys on this offense, they, they need this bye week. Yeah, and Cam Taylor-Britt also leaving for with that shoulder injury here in Minneapolis. So it is a bye week next game for the Huskers a week from Saturday when they host the Indiana Hoosiers.